Welcome to The Thriving Marriage, the podcast for those who want to get their spouse back in love with them and truly thrive. You'll learn why 95% of people don't save their marriage and the secret method no one else is talking about that will change everything for you. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Let's, Let's turn, turn tragedy, tragedy to, to triumph. triumph. Here are your hosts, international marriage experts, Mark Johnston and Heather Choate. Typically, uh, I, I am running this with uh, my business partner, Heather Choate, but uh, Heather had to duck out today. So I'm going to be running this podcast on my own. So uh, what we want, uh, the topic of today, what, what I wanted to talk with all of you about is, uh, you know, the, it's the signs that their story is changing, you know, signs that your spouse may be reconsidering uh things and maybe coming back to you uh, i know we had actually i think we had actually posted this uh topic some time ago but uh you know as, as things have come up we've had to change our schedule around a little bit here but before we get into that topic right here we i want to get into the client win of the week so the client win of the week is you know as always we do change the, the names of people who are posting this, um, but and so in this case, we'll, we'll uh, this is the win for Chris. Uh, <coughs> uh, and Chris was talking about um, you know how he hasn't been posting in a while, but he he had some a big wins. He was close to giving up. He said, then one day happened. She asked if we could go see a movie together, just the two of us. It was fun, but a little awkward. Um, how did a little awkward how to be around her on a date so we we started spending more time together and doing more with the girls a few weeks later she asked if we could if she could move home and i was completely surprised it was slow going she still slept in another room for a couple of weeks but she's back to sleeping in our bed again and we we're making huge strides she finally agreed to go to church with the family again we have gone together the last two weekends this morning when i left the house we kissed goodbye and and told her i loved her and she said i love you too this is something I never thought would happen again. Don't lose faith. Work the program, work on yourself, and use the tools to build all your relationships. I have better relationships with my daughters now as well. It, it works. I will keep working the program. And I still have a long way to go, but I couldn't be happier. Either I'm seeing some people are popping in. So this, like I said, this was a win from Chris. And of course, name changed, and Chris was losing hope. You know, he... he things were really difficult and then at one point his wife started coming around a little bit more and this is what we wanted to talk about this is why we like sharing some of these uh some of these wins here is because oftentimes they do apply to the the topic at hand so like i said the topic this week is exactly that like how do you actually how can you actually tell what you know if your spouse is reconsidering if they're maybe starting to look at things a little bit differently and they are uh, considering coming back. So before we get into that specifically, uh, I wanna just clarify this topic just a little bit, you know, in terms of like what is going on? What do I mean when we, when we talk about things like changing their story? So within all of this, um, you know, you'll, you'll hear Heather or I talk about changing the narrative, changing the story a little bit. Uh, and when we were talking about that, this, we're specifically talking about how um, a, a narrative is about the relationship is the general description of, um, of you as a partner and the reasons for the, the state of the relationship. So th this would be something like, I'm leaving the relationship because it's terrible and my husband or my wife is a horrible person that would be like this narrative or this story or it might be that um we are just not in love anymore and there's nothing that can be done about this and my spouse just doesn't make me happy <laughs> hi there um, people are saying hi over in the chat there uh so the narratives that we see on all this the narratives are indications of more deeply held thoughts or beliefs and I, this is an important thing to, to keep in mind because, um, you know, you might hear complaints, you might hear descriptions of 
uh, the relationship, but it really is a big window into a little bit more what's going on. So you might, um, you know, you might hear some of the, these descriptions of your relationship where they're saying, okay, we're just not in love anymore. But it, that, that statement in and of itself says so, so much about the relationship. Like we're not in love anymore could mean, um, you know, I've been thinking about this for a long time and I've lost hope that I can make any changes here. I've tried to, to make, make us happier. I, I couldn't make this work. Like, do you, do you hear how there's so much left unsaid with these sort of, uh, these sort of statements? And a lot of times these stories present roadblocks toward repairing a relationship. And in many cases, you know, you all are seeing these sort of things. So some common, other common narratives that I, I see a lot. Like one is there's nothing that can be done to fix our marriage. Or two, I fell out of love and there's, you know, it's a variation of first. I fell out of love and there's nothing that can be done about it. Almost like a saying like there's nothing that can be done to change feelings. Or the grass is greener outside. Like I would be happier if I just left. Or there's no reason to work on the marriage anymore. Now, I'm seeing people say hi here. And honestly, the this platform that I'm running it on, all it says is Facebook users. Um, yeah, it just says Facebook user. It doesn't say who's making comments. I, I'm running this on an app called BeLive. So all I see is a bunch of people saying, hi, hi, Mark. <laughs> so like I said, these are some common narratives and it really indicates a lot going on. Um, whether that, you know, a simple statement like there's nothing that can be done to fix our marriage is, a, uh, is really giving a window to those beliefs about hope or the, the kind of um, beliefs about someone's ability to make a, a change uh, in, in their own personal life, they're uh, oh, uh, like having a, an internal locus of control, like a, a sense that they can control their their own destiny. I'm going to point out, I, I I admit these narratives are typically very difficult to change. Oh, hi, Joey. Um, yeah, these narratives are typically very difficult to change, but they can be changed with consistent efforts applying the right principles, and that's a lot of what we we here with High Thrive Coaching um, try to help you out with is how, you know, what kind of principles need to be applied here so that you can be much more consistent. And I, I'm seeing here some of the comments like, I miss my wife so bad. And, you know, here you are wondering just what you can do about this. Well, I mean, of course, this video by itself this this live stream by itself isn't going to solve everything. I recommend if this is the first one that you've joined in here, please go and look at some of our other podcasts or, or possibly join one of our programs to get access to more, more of the videos. In this case, though, um, like I said, some of these narratives can be changed with a lot of consistent effort. Um, I, I think a lot of times, especially when this is like the major roadblock, in many cases it is, there needs to be a, a fair amount of acceptance for your partner's feelings, um, you know, where they have overcorrected with their behavior. And they've gone to some unhealthy or re un relationship ending behavior. Uh, you know, a lot of times we hear some of the, these narratives like it's hopeless. I'm done. There's nothing that can be done anymore. I don't love you anymore. And people don't hear the complaint. There isn't like a safe space to share some of those feelings and they just react and, um, fight against that, and that really doesn't work for you. But that's not the, that's not the topic for today. Uh, not the topic for today. We can talk about that another time in terms of like what do we do with some of these um, some of these statements. But today I wanted to talk, like I said earlier on, the topic for today was how do you know when things are turning around? And you might hear in the background that sound. So, like I said, how would you know that your spouse is starting to see things differently or that they are reconsidering the marriage? Um, some things that I see quite often, just like in the example of um, with Chris that I was mentioning earlier, is where you start seeing a little bit more lingering around or spending more time around you or maybe inviting you out to, to more encounters. 
so if you are seeing your <laughs> kids, right? If you're seeing um, them pushing into your space quite a bit more, this is a huge sign. Like in, in Chris's example, his wife was actually inviting them out to go see a movie just to hang out together. Um, you know, this, what this indicates is there's a sense of calm or ease between the two of you. It can also indicate like an interest about you in particular. And this is why I, I'm pointing this out. And this is really especially important if previously the complaints were about tension or fights or arguments or the lack of connection. Um, and okay, so I'm seeing like some comments here, like you're saying, I've been working on this for over a year. And honestly, sometimes it, it does take so, a lot of consistency. But if you have been working on, like I did say, hey, this is gonna take some time. If you have been working for like, over a year on some things like this, like um, one of the, the users is pointing out, it may mean that you need to shift some tactics or take a look at this a little bit differently. If, like I said, I can't see the usernames here, but if you're one of our clients, please reach out to me You know, in one of the one of our other services and we can take a closer look at things. Another, it, another indicator that they are um, reconsidering the relationship. Maybe they are expressing doubt or remorse or fear concerning their, their reasons for leaving. Um, so things like that, uh, this is, if they are expressing a lot of doubt, here, this is showing that they're examining the situation a little bit more closely and recognizing that they could possibly have been wrong. This is them um, starting to look at this and say, okay, am I really doing everything I can? If, if you are seeing someone who's very determined to leave, you're not gonna hear those, those questions. You're not gonna hear the, the remorse. They're gonna say, this is a really great decision that I am all for this, I'm, I'm heading out. So these sort of things where there's a lot of doubt or remorse, are huge in terms of indicators that they are starting to shift their perspective a little bit more. Um, another indicator here is that if they are talking about future with you, even if it's in passing, like if they're saying, you know, if we get back together or when we get back together, or, you know, I, I might consider getting back together if something different were happening here. Uh, if they're discussing other plans like with you if they're talking about hey it would be really fun to um you know all be together on a vacation here over, over the summer some or to all get together to you know as a family to go do our trip to the beach or to europe or to wherever it may be um these these sort of things here this indicates that they're examining their future and see you as part of it if they are really gung-ho, they're really adamant about leaving, they're not gonna be really making those future plans with you. They're not gonna really include you in those plans because they're gonna see you as not a part of their, their future. It's a great sign that they still want you in their life or are not willing to give you up quite yet. And any of these, any mention of, uh, of these, these signs, these are great, um, opportunities to kind of talk about some of this, about some of their thoughts, some of their feelings, some of their concerns. Uh, another big, big indicator here is if their attitude, attitude towards you or others has become more positive and respectful. This is just a, a simply a good way to tell that <clears throat> their judgment is shifting. Uh, a lot of times marriages come apart based on a person's view of their partner and the status of the relationship. They say, my partner is, you know, there's that contempt gets, um, starts to creep into the relationship. So if that contempt starts leaving and they are not seeing you as this horrible person, but seeing you actually recognizing your value, recognizing the good things that you contribute into your interactions, this tells you that they are starting to see things a little bit differently, that they are looking at you a little bit differently and possibly reconsidering um, their decision on the relationship. Um, so I'm seeing several of the comments here um, and saying that you're, you're seeing a little bit of those. Like my husband says this, he says he feels bad for feeling this way um, or lack thereof about me or I, you know, little things like this. Like I said, 
if you are seeing these indications, some of these indicators that things are turning around, this is something that you need to capitalize on. You need to take a, a good look at this and ask questions and say, okay, I've noticed that this is going on. Hey, I noticed that um, you seem to be really enjoying, we seem to be really enjoying our time together. Even if you're just calling attention to what's going on, I think this is a good thing to reinforce a new story. So if they are spending more time, like if you just emphasize that, hey, I really had a good time around. We seem to be really enjoying each other's company quite a bit more. Or if they're expressing that doubt, you say, hey, I wonder why, you know, it seems like you're really questioning this decision. Why don't you talk with me about that? I really wonder why this uh, this is really hard for you to pull away. Um, or why you might, what might be keeping you from making that decision per permanently. You uh, want to explore these things. Or if they are talking about a future with you, even if it's in passing, you, you want to extend that conversation out further. Like, I've just noticed that you are actually talking about doing things with me um, when previously it's been really hard to be together. I'm not, not that I'm complaining, but I wonder what's different between us. You know, you're, you're emphasizing though that shift, the the more positive thoughts, the more positive view. Um, so another in person is asking, well, what if they're not leaving and they just don't want to work on the marriage? I think that's going to be a topic for another day. That's a completely different. You know, I don't mean to just simply put you put the the question off, but this is. I, I think this that would be a good topic for another podcast here. Like, what do we do with um, basically apathy in the relationship? Now, I want to I want to put it in a caution here because I know many of you are desperate for wanting some action from your spouse. So I want to put in a caution here. If your spouse is reconsidering the relationship, especially after a big um, blow up, a, you know, separation or threats of divorce, um, you need to take a careful look at your own situation. And you may not want to immediately take them back without, without questions. You need to ask yourself some questions first. Like, are we actually addressing what happened here? Are we actually moving towards resolving that issue? If you're simply sliding back into the relationship because your partner is more willing now, I can fairly well guarantee that you will hit some of the same problems down the road. And that's not a situation that you want to be in because if you are hitting the same problems after they come back, the narrative then deepens a little bit that nothing we do can fix this. We're always gonna come back to these same problems. So, there are lots of things that you should be looking out for. And certainly, the list that I gave is not an exhaustive list. And, you know, if you are even have an inkling that your spouse is reconsidering um, working on the relationship or coming back, make sure that if you take away nothing else, make sure that you are capitalizing on that, being curious, asking questions, and emphasizing some of these newer, more healthy thoughts. All right, the podcast here with uh, when I don't have Heather on, they tend to be a little bit more straightforward to the point, a little bit shorter. So we are gonna go on to our marriage mythbuster for today. Um, the marriage mythbuster is that passion always fades with time. And I, I brought this up, I'm bringing this up because I, I actually hear this quite a bit, like the idea that, um, you know, it's inevitable that couples will grow apart, that you might just have to deal with that and deal with a lack of connection. I remember very, very vividly being on a family uh, reunion vacation get together when I was uh, first married. I was probably less than a year married, maybe, maybe a couple years in at most. And my wife um, was sitting on my lap and we were just kind of snuggling up there. And a family member came up and said, hey, you know what, that you guys are really cute looking, that's all nice, but you should enjoy this while it lasts because it doesn't last forever. 
doesn't last forever. Um, he says, you know, eventually couples they get into more of a working, um, a working relationship. And I remember looking at my wife and I was thinking, you know, I don't think that needs to be the case. Uh, and started to ask myself, you know, I, it's just simply stuck out because I honestly, like right in that moment, I was so in love with my wife and I still am. I still uh, get excited at the prospect of seeing my wife later, even today. You know, I know I'm going to go see my wife later. You know, after I'm done working, we're going to spend some time together like we always do. I'm still excited about this. And I was thinking, okay, am I, is this a unique situation? Am I just, <laughs> is it, it or do we have this unique relationship that um and I, as i started looking into this you know of course it, that's not the case uh, i remember um reading in as i was looking into this some studies of infatuation or just excitement and seeing partners and they they started uh scanning you know scanning the brains for you know people who are in love in new relationships and mapping where what kind of what parts of the brain would light up when they would see pictures of their significant other um they also took the same same sort of scans they sa said to couples who had been together you know 30 plus years and they'd show a picture of their partner while they're getting um you know the brain scan and there are many couples that still had that those same parts of the brain light up because they were, you know, the thought of their significant other really excited them. It really made them uh, want to go see their, their partner and, you know, have those feelings of love. So, you know, and maybe this is once again, a, a topic for another time, but I was thinking, okay, well, what actually is the difference in there? What happens with those couples that, grow apart and do not have those same feelings of love um, and what what happens with those couples who actually do maintain the infatuation and limerence um, and you know I, I think this goes back to just some of our basic principles that we we, we teach here with high thrive coaching I think a big piece of this here is that you know I know that in my own marriage, um, my wife, Jen, and I, we have a lot of acceptance for the not so pretty parts of, uh, of our lives, of our relationship. We take a look at that and we say, okay, we, we have acceptance for the efforts that we're each putting into this, the struggles that we both have. And beyond just simply acceptance of the, those not so pretty parts, we have a habit of emphasizing the, the really important things that we each bring, that we do bring to the, the marriage. And I think even that by itself is what really keeps my wife, Jen and I happily in love. Um, and, you know, as I started, you know, I was looking at some videos on this and trying to figure out, okay, is there a common theme? I would look at um, videos of old couples who have been together for a long time. I uh, asked some questions of my parents who've been married for over 50 years over the weekend when I, I saw them. And, you know, that that commonality seemed to stick throughout. Like, I don't know, there's things that my mom, my mother and father find annoying about each other, but there are also some things that, there are some key factors that they really find important that each bring to the, the relationship that really keeps them together. Um, I'm, so in my mind, I think that's, a, a big factor in what keeps that infatuation, that, that limerence, that love alive. Uh, so I'm gonna, if, if that's something that you're looking for, if you're having trouble with reading some of the signs in your relationship, please reach out to us. Um, you know, we're always wanting to give support. We're always looking to help you if that's the direction you wanna go in. You can always get, an appointment to see if uh, perhaps our program would be good for you. Uh, you can always do that at highthrivecoaching.com slash apply. Um, or you can ask some people around here to see if, you know, if other people around here have gotten some help from one of our programs. So I'm just gonna address maybe a, a few of these comments here um, really quick. So 
I'm seeing someone talking about how we have more passion now, but ha he has the other woman. Am I silly allowing physical contact? Uh, and I think that, you know, just to answer a few of these questions, in that case, there does absolutely, you, you guys are not actually talking about the problems at hand. Essentially, you are going into that caution statement that I, I made where you, you may be sliding back into the relationship, but not really addressing what maybe drove you apart in the first place. Uh, so I, you know, if this, you know, like I said, I can, I'm having trouble seeing the, the, the names. Um, you know, certainly I would like to talk about this with you if you're one of our, our clients. Um, otherwise, you know, I, I do suggest that you get some professional help with this, but there does need to be some boundaries and some clear communication with your, your spouse in terms of what is it or is not acceptable. Um, another person saying he's reached out, he he's, keeps reaching out to me more and more, but I still don't see him. Um, I'm not sure what that means, but okay. Well, with that, I think uh, I think I've addressed most of the questions here. So next week, we're going to share with you how to deal with your partner's midlife crisis, or at least the next time <laughs> next time I'm, I'm in here. I know um, I might be taken off next Tuesday, so we'll we'll work that out. And that's going to be the, the next big topic, at least. Wonderful to have you all here. Um, loved your comments and I uh, hope you all have a, for those of you in the States, hope you all have a good Thanksgiving. Thanks for listening to The Thriving Marriage, your A to Z blueprint for not just surviving marriage, but thriving. Until next time, my friends, thrive on.